Hey guys, so uh, welcome back. Um, this is going to be an incredible study. Now, you, if you hear a lot of background sounds and you see flashes of lightning behind me through that window, uh, it's because we are having very heavy weather. So I'm going to get directly to this study. Now, this is something that the Lord showed me. Uh, I had a dream on the early morning of the 28th, that's the 27th night and 28th early morning. And at that time, I couldn't figure it out. And I'll tell you about the dream, but at the end of this study, the study is important. My dream isn't, but just know that it has come from the Lord. The study is incredible. Now, I've done parts of this study before when I was led by the Holy Spirit to do this, but I didn't connect all the dots back then. Now, after uh, what the Lord taught me, all the dots are connected and it's incredible. So I'm going to get right to it. Okay, right to it. Now, the first thing that I need to show you is that there are two calendars, okay, two calendars. One was the ancient calendar, which was from the beginning of creation. Okay, now this was the calendar. These names of the month were not there. It was just called the first month, second month, third month, fourth month, so on and so forth, okay? But there were 12 months, all right? And this was the ancient calendar. Now, in Exodus, when Passover was instituted, God said in Exodus 12:2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So in effect, what happened at this time when Passover was instituted in Exodus is that God changed the calendar and what was initially the first month became the seventh month and what was the seventh month became the first month. Okay, you just need to know this much, all right? Because... Um, so the months were interchanged. Okay, so in Exodus, um, in Nisan, God said, this is going to be the first month of the year to you. Okay, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. All right, and Tishri became the seventh month. Tishri used to be the first month. It became the seventh month. And then the seventh month became the first month. Okay, so no confusion there. There is a Genesis calendar. Okay, and there's an Exodus calendar. Okay, it's also called the civil and the sacred calendars. But um, moving on. Let's go to the next slide. So here in the next here in the next slide, you can see that in Genesis 8, 4, okay, uh, and the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. Okay, now Ararat, uh, seventh month, 17th day, which is 717, okay. I've been seeing that for years now, but uh, this clearly says seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. Now, Ararat, the word itself, okay, it means the curse reversed, all right? And I'm going to show you that as well because I have that open. Hang on, I'll just get that out for you. Okay, so if you come to Bible study tools, you'll see the word, okay, the word Ararat, all right? It means, that it has several definitions. One of them, the first one, the main one is the curse reversed. Okay, the curse reversed. And when the when Noah's ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat, it was said that the curse was finally reversed. Okay, because uh, the world was full of darkness and dark deeds, and uh, God sent the flood. And uh, Noah's ark saved Noah. Okay, it saved a total of eight people and thousands of animals. And uh, that's there in my previous study. But uh, this word Ararat means the curse reversed, okay? So you can see that in Bible lexicons, all right? So here goes. Now the next slide, or we'll go back to the previous slide. So here you can see that the seventh month, 17th day, which is given in Genesis 8, 4, okay, on the Genesis calendar, later became the first month, 17th day on the Exodus calendar. Like I just showed you the Exodus calendar and the Genesis calendar. So because the first and the seventh months were like interchanged. So this, when did the ark come to rest? It came to rest, Noah's ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat, which is the curse reversed on the seventh month, 17th day. Also, you can say it's the first month, 17th day on the Exodus calendar. Okay, now this is very important because it ties up into so many different things. Now, let's go to the next slide. This is the next slide. Now, here you can see that Christ was crucified on the 14th of Nisan. That is just the 
at the on the day of the Passover Seder. Okay. Now I want to show you a study before I do this, but anyway, so he was he went to the grave on 14th of Nisan. He was crucified and he was put in the tomb. Okay, on the 14th of Nisan itself, before the Passover started. All right. So this was on the day, uh, on on the eve of Passover. Okay, and then. He resurrected after three days in the tomb on the 17th of Nisan, okay? 17th day of the seventh month on the Genesis calendar. And the, and as you can see, it's 117 on the Exodus calendar, okay? The first uh, month is Nisan on the Exodus calendar. So on the 17th day of the first month on the Exodus calendar and on the seventh, on the 17th day of the seventh month on the Genesis calendar, which is when the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. And what did the Lord do for us on the cross? And when he resurrected, the curse was reversed in the sense that anyone who looks up to him and who accepts him as Lord, the curse is reversed for that person, irrespective. It's grace, okay? It's, it's, it's just incredible that the ark comes to rest on Ararat, which means the curse reversed, and on the same day, centuries later, Jesus is crucified, okay, uh, on the 14th of Nisan, and after three days, he's resurrected on the 17th day of Nisan, which is the same day that the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat, or the curse reversed, okay, now I'm going to take you through an incredible study. Now this study, I have labeled it the Lamb of God study because it has everything to do with the Lamb of God and the Passover, Christ being the Passover Lamb, okay? Now this is one of my study Bibles, it's an illustrated study Bible and this study you see in front of you, this is from here, okay? Now I know, I know I couldn't show it to you like this, so I have, what I've done is uh, taken a photograph and then added my own uh, study material to this, okay? But let's start with this Lamb of God study, all right? So at the beginning of John's Gospel, John the Baptist introduced Jesus by calling him the Lamb of God. You all know this is in the first chapter of John, verses 29 and then on verse 36, okay? So now let's just see uh, that John, what John really meant, okay, is that John presented Jesus as the Passover Lamb whose death marks the central event of the Passover season, okay? So there are many verses here that you can refer to. In the first century, Jews made a pilgrimage to, to Jerusalem each spring to celebrate the Passover and to uh, reread the story of the Exodus, okay? This is from the Haggadah test, text, okay? Uh, so they reread the story of Exodus, all right? When Israel was being rescued from Egypt, the blood of a lamb was sprinkled on the doorposts. You know that, right? On the lintel and the doorposts, the blood of the lamb was sprinkled, okay? Which is again why we say that Jesus is dull at the door, okay? Now, uh, so here we go. So now, so it was sprinkled over the doorposts, okay, of each Jewish home in Egypt and saved those inside from death, okay? Now, these Jews, they would come every year to Jerusalem, all right? So now, uh, this is what it is, but what I wanted to show you in this, okay? Now, here it is. Passover always starts on the 14th of Nisan with the Passover Seder, okay? The same evening that the lamb is slaughtered, and it is called the preparation of Passover. I want you to pay attention to this, the preparation of Passover, because this is important to us, okay? And Passover week or the Feast of Matzot or the Feast of Unleavened, Unleavened Bread, Matzot is basically Unleavened Bread, okay, is always from 15th to 21st of Nisan, okay. And this always happens in the springtime, all right. So here we have that the Passover always starts with the Passover Seder. Now, to make this clearer for you, there's a Wikipedia page, okay, on Nisan. Now here you can see that 14th of Nisan is the Passover Seder, okay, which is basically a ritual feast before the beginning of the Passover. It's called the preparation of the Passover, okay. And so this is the Passover Seder, Seder and this Haggadah that I was telling you about, okay, is a Jewish text that sets forth the order of the Passover Seder. And it's also, you know, they read about uh, 
um, the fulfillment of the mitzvahs uh, and tell their children the story from the book of Exodus about God bringing the Israelites out of Egypt. All right. So 14th of Nisan, remember, is the Passover seder. This is called the preparation of the Passover. And 15 to 21st of Nisan is the feast of Matzot or unleavened bread. Okay, this is the feast. This is the seven-day Passover festival. 15 to 21st of Nisan. Now I just want you to keep that in mind. All right. Let's go back to our Lamb of God study. Now, so that is what it says. Okay. Now we know that Jesus was crucified on 14th of Nisan. How do we know that? We know that from John, okay, the book of John. Now, you know, on the 10th of Nisan, if you read Exodus 12, okay, on the 10th of Nisan, the lamb is selected, okay? That's when Jesus entered on a donkey in Jerusalem, okay? The lamb, an unblemished lamb is selected on the 10th of Nisan. And on the 14th of Nisan, it says in Exodus 12, 6, take care of them, the lambs, until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. The lambs are slaughtered at twilight on the 14th, okay, 14th of Nisan. And this is called also the meal that is eaten on this day, the 14th of Nisan, before the festival of unleavened bread starts from 15 to 21st of Nisan. This is called the day of preparation of Passover, okay? Now, if you see John 19, 14, all right, you see that Jesus, okay, uh, it was the day of preparation of the Passover. Where is my mouse gone? I can't see it, okay. It was the day of preparation of the Passover, and it was about noon when Pilate addressed the crowd, and, you know, Pilate addresses the crowd, and they say, crucify him, crucify him. So he's saying, I find no, no, you know, I find no blemish in this, uh, I find nothing wrong with him, with Jesus. And the crowd says, crucify him, crucify him, okay? So this was about at noon, all right? On the day of the preparation of the Passover, all right? Now remember, Jewish days go from sunset to sunset, all right? Okay, now in verse 42, in John 19, you'll see, because it was the Jewish day of preparation. Preparation of what? Preparation of the Passover. Okay, it's given in verse 14. Hmm? And since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. So he was not only crucified, but he was also, he was, he, he was dead. They slaughtered him on Passover, on, on the 14th day of Nisan. Okay, on the day of the preparation of the Passover, which is when the Passover seder is eaten. Okay. And by twilight on the same day, all right, he was already in the tomb. Okay, that's then verse 42. So you have these two verses that tell you when Jesus was crucified. It was on the 14th of Nisan, uh, the day of the preparation of the Passover. As I told you, the Passover seder is eaten on the 14th of Nisan. Okay, and then the Passover festival, the festival of unleavened bread or the feast of Matzot begins from the 15th of Nisan to the 21st, okay? Now, here there are a few verses that I want to share with you. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us, okay? Just as John said that this is the lamb of God, okay? He was, he was our Passover sacrifice. Now, let me move this here. Mm -hmm. So now you see that in uh, the in the study Bible they've given this verse. He carried our sins in his body on the cross. By his wounds you are healed. This they've mentioned is First Peter two twenty four. But the truth is that the that Peter was quoting verbatim from Isaiah fifty three five. Okay, so what does Isaiah fifty three five says? Isaiah says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. Okay, so the punishment that brought us peace, the punishment that saved us, okay, brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Okay, now the amazing part is that Isaiah wrote this 700 years before the crucifixion of the Lord. There wasn't even a way of death called crucifixion at the time Isaiah actually wrote this, okay? And so Isaiah writes this 700 years before the crucifixion, okay? The prophet Isaiah. Then Psalm 22:16, which says, 
they have pierced my hands and feet was written by king david okay david amalek king david thousand years before the crucifixion so not only was isaiah a great prophet but king david who was the king of israel was also a great prophet and he wrote about the crucifixion in great detail in psalm 22 verse 16 actually mentions they have pierced my hands and feet okay so i wanted to share this with you too because it's very very uh, very touching again you know how jesus went quietly he was as i said he was slaughtered okay he went as a lamb to the slaughter to fulfill scripture now in isaiah 53 verse 7 It's written he was oppressed and afflicted yet he did not open his mouth he was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent so he did not open his mouth because scripture had to be fulfilled you see so and here we have Christ our passover lamb has been sacrificed for us 1 Corinthians 5:7 but these verses from Isaiah and from Psalm 22 are so touching and this tells us everything we need to know about the truth that Jesus is indeed the passover lamb okay i'll take you to the next slide so i've already shared uh, this slide with you okay so as i said i have shared a lot of this with you but now is the part that i didn't know and i just connected the dots okay and i'm going to share that with you too and it's here so over here uh let me just put this here so in numbers 33 128 you know so we know that the ark rested on ararat on the 17th of nisan okay we know that our lord jesus was resurrected on the 17th of nisan okay but do you know what else happened on the 17th of nisan the red sea was parted and the israelites walked through the red sea on the 17th of nisan how do we know this so here's the study okay numbers 33 1 to 8 all right so verse 1 these are the journeys of the children of israel which went forth out of the land of egypt with their armies under the hand of moses and aaron verse 2 and moses wrote their goings according to their journeys by the commandment of the lord this is lord god your he wav he and these are their journeys according to their goings out okay so now i want you to remember that jewish days start at sunset all right so you know they go from sunset to sunset right so here we have verse 3 and they departed from ramses ramses is the name of the pharaoh okay in the first month on the 15th day of the first month all right so on the 15th of nisan is when they departed from ramses all right the pharaoh on the morrow after the passover uh, here what they mean is that it was after the seder on the 14th of nisan the night before so what happened here was that uh, they killed the passover lamb on the 14th right at the twilight as it is given in gen in exodus 12 right so they kill they, they were supposed to kill the uh, the unblemished lamb uh, on the 14th of nisan okay and that night was the lord's passover so they killed the lamb they put the blood on the doorpost and the lintel okay and the lord passed over and all the first born first born were um, of egypt were dead okay in the same night this is the 14th night all right so it started at sunset and as it got darker they had to kill uh, they had to uh, eat the passover lamb and uh, they had to put the blood on the door and uh, lintel on the doorposts and lintel of the of their homes and they had to eat the passover lamb with their loins girded with sandals on their feet you know it's all there in exodus 12 go and read that and what happened was the same night the lord passed over and all the first born of egypt okay were dead all right including the first born of cattle and first born of course of human beings all right now so so this is what it says so the on the morrow after the passover that is after seder on the 14th of nisan the night before okay so this is the next day and the children of israel went out 
with a high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. They were, the Egyptians were in awe, literally in terror, right? So they had literally just seen the 10 plagues of Egypt, okay, that Moses said had warned them and the plagues happened, all right? And this was the last plague, okay? And so all the firstborn of Egypt are dead, okay? On the night of the Passover, right after these people eat the Passover seder, okay? And they were told to be ready with their sandals on, eat it with your loins girded and your sandals on, okay? Now, and they were not allowed to leave their house till the morning, right? And then the Lord passed over, the firstborns were dead, this was the tenth plague, the final plague, all right, for the Egyptians buried all their firstborn which the Lord had smitten among them, upon their gods also the Lord executed judgments because all the plagues were like related to the gods that Egypt, Egyptians worshipped you know like for example frogs flies you know yeah, I mean Beelzebub is the lord of flies right and then you have they worshipped frogs they worshipped flies they worshipped all kinds of things so anyway I don't want to go there but uh, so this is what the lord executed judgments not only on the Egyptians but their so-called gods all right so firstborns were buried the same day on the 14th because remember it goes from sunset to sunset so at night all this happens at twilight on the 14th they eat the passover seder okay after the twilight okay when the 14th of nisan starts and through the night the firstborns are dead in the morning everyone gets up and everybody's screaming and wailing because the firstborn of all the egyptians are dead and then they have to bury them because Egypt is a hot country. You have to bury them on the same day, right? So on the same day, the first bonds are buried, okay, on 14th. Because only after sunset, it will become the 15th. And then the Israelites leave, okay? So the, the first bonds are buried. And then uh, towards the evening, when it becomes the 15th at sunset, the Israelites leave and they go close by. Okay, so they then the children of Israel removed from Ramses, the Pharaoh, and pitched in Sukkot. Sukkot is not very far from where they were, all right? So that is the beginning of the 15th at sunset, all right? Verse 6. And they departed from Sukkot, okay, and pitched in Itham. Now, uh, Sukkot and Itham are uh, just a few miles walk from what I've, uh, you know, I've uh, researched and seen. And Itham is in the edge of wilderness. So they camp for the night till the 16th morning. So 15th, uh, uh, till 15th morning, okay, uh, they were at Sukkot, all right. Then they moved to and they pitched camp in Itham, Itham okay, which was, uh, uh, they camped for the night, sorry, the, there till 16th morning. Verse 7, and they removed from Itham and turned again into Pai Hairoth, which is before Baal Zephon, and they pitched before Migdol. So in Pai Hairoth, there's a place called Migdol where they set up camp for the third night, all right? So by evening or the beginning of the 17th of Nisan, they camped, okay, for the night where at Migdol, near Pai Hairoth. Okay, now these names are interesting. I made a note of them. So, Pai uh, Hairot means the mouth of the gorge, okay, in Hebrew. Okay, uh, just a minute. Yeah, sorry, I had a catch in my throat and I was coughing. All right, so here, you know, Migdol means a tower. It can also mean a dark tower, all right? And do you know what Baal Zephon means or Baal Zephon? Baal Zephon means cold, okay? It, it can mean a dark winter, okay? And Baal is, you know, the demon, the Baal, like Baal Zebub, right? So, Baal Zephon means the winter or cold, okay? So, from the cold tower, the dark towers of darkness, they left, all right? They departed, all right? And they departed the next or on the 17th morning from before Pai Hahirod, all right? And by the same evening, of the same 17th of Nisan, they crossed the Red Sea, all right, and passed through the midst of the sea. So here we have it in verse 8, they passed through the midst of the sea, and it was the 17th, because they camped first in Sukkot, then the next day in Itham, and next day in Migdol, okay. That's, that's my dog, hang on, I'll just let him out. 
So now what I've shown you is that there are three major, major world events that happen on the 17th of Nisan, okay, which can be called the 7th month, 17th day on the Genesis calendar and it can be called the 1st month, 17th day on the Exodus calendar. So those of you who have been seeing a lot of 717 and 117, this is what the Lord was highlighting to all of us, okay, and I've just shared the study with you. So the first occurrence occurrence is on in Genesis 8-4, okay, when the ark came to rest, in the mountains of Ararat. Okay, the second occurrence which I didn't know about, all right, which the Lord has shown me is incredible, which is that the Moses parted the Red Sea, okay, on the 17th of Nisan, all right, right after the Passover Seder, they leave Egypt, okay, it's all there, Numbers 33, verses 1 to 8. Now, these that I put in uh, orange, this is not, uh, this is what I have put as commentary, okay, as, as uh, the study inserts. What is there in blue is the scripture, okay, and these things in orange are um, my study notes, all right. So, I've just put them together so that I can give you a clear picture. So, the first occurrence was the Noah's Ark coming to rest on the mountains of Ararat, the curse reverse. Second was when the Egyptian curse was broken, okay, and all these names are so, so interesting because I told you, Migdol means the Towers of Darkness, right, all right, and uh, this uh, Baal Ziphon is the Dark Winter, all right, means darkness, dark winter, it has to do with the demon Baal that had a hold on them in Egypt, okay, so they were rescued out of there and on 17th of Nisan they crossed the Red Sea because for three days they camped first at Sukkot then at Itam then at Megdol and then they crossed on the third day after that they crossed the, you know they passed through the midst of the sea so it's incredible so 17th of Nisan uh, the ark rested on Ararat 17th of Nisan Moses parts the Red Sea and they leave the dark towers okay and the dark winter all right very interesting and then the third and final okay is our lord's resurrection on the 17th day of nisan because he was crucified on the 14th day he was put inside the tomb by the 14th uh, you know by uh, just before the passover seder he was uh, before passover the uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Feast of Matzah started, he was already inside the tomb by that evening, okay? So, you have, uh, this is incredible, 17th of Nisan. So, we have uh, the Ark resting and uh, the curse reversed. Then we have uh, the curse removed from, the Egyptian curse removed by parting of the Red Sea on the 17th of Nisan. And the third is the most incredible which is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior and, you know, his resurrection to life on the 17th day of Nisan. So these three are connected. I never connected the dots before. And now after sharing the study, I can share what I went through. Okay, if you're interested, I'll tell you. I shared it only with another sister in Christ called Dawn. And she has been such a rock and such a help and support to me because I was going through a very dark sort of night of the soul when 2023 came and nothing had happened. I had lost my hope in the blessed hope. And you know, the last divine dream I had was I was in my father's house. That was in April last year in 2022. And I had shared that last year. After that, nothing. It all went dry and I had lost my blessed hope. I thought it's never going to happen. It's not, you know, I'd lost it. And then on the early morning, the night of 27, the early morning of 28th, I was I was in this dream and I must show you this, okay? Um, I have a picture very close to what I saw in the dream. So here it is. This is a painting by Thomas Kincaid. Now I'm a great fan of Thomas Kincaid's painting. I know he had a terrible ending, but I hope he's with the Lord. He did a lot of, lot of work for the Lord. So this is a painting by Thomas Kincaid called Walk of Faith and I was in a garden very similar to this in the dream and I was walking with the Lord. Okay, so the Lord was here on my left hand side. Okay, his face was shining. Guys, his, his skin was just glowing. It was just like light. 
okay and and I had to keep my I couldn't look straight at him I had to keep my face this way and my head was down and he was teaching me and when I woke up I forgot the teaching because it was put into my head but I was not allowed to remember it on that morning okay I just knew I had been in a place and I was given very thin wafer like you know you get these crackers okay that you have a cheese but they were thinner than that and then I was given a sort of a pile of wafers you know like um, those thin crackers and uh, the, the Lord didn't give me that somebody else perhaps it was an angel or someone after we walked and the and Lord Jesus was talking to me and explaining things to me I was given there was this man who gave me these pile of about seven to ten wafers okay I didn't count them but it felt like that very thin a lot I mean much thinner than the crackers you eat with your cheese you know cheese and crackers but so I couldn't make out head or tail when I got up in the morning uh, it was incredible and a miracle happened too that very morning I went to the service entrance and I've shared this with my sister Dawn I went to the service entrance because that's where all the workers come and go and you know the trash bags and all we keep it out there all right I come into the house and I see this all right this chewed up tiny pieces of paper okay lying just at my entrance okay inside the house okay before the utility room the we have the entrance the utility then the utility room and then it comes into the kitchen okay so it's like the back entrance of the house the service entrance okay and this thing which is completely chewed up okay these are pages of a tiny tiny bible now I've shown you my Bibles are like study Bibles, okay? And they're huge and the print is large because I don't have great eyesight. I'll show you the other one. Come on. So this is my other Bibles. Okay, they're all large. Now compare this with this. So this is chewed up and I realized it was Remy the rat. Okay, that's another story. Remy, okay, the rat is a mountain rat. He lives in a hole in the side of the mountain near my service entrance. And I give him food to eat, okay, from time to time I feed him. And he left this for me, alright. Actually, I have a picture of that. Wait, I'll share that with Sister Dawn and I'm going to share that with you. So he left these pages, okay. I thought there were three pages, but there are four pages. And do you know these pages? I need to show you something. I'm going to, uh, so this is my study Bible, this one that I just showed you, yeah, this one. And um, look at the size comparison with this, okay? So all my Bibles are big, okay? Because my oops, my eyesight is not that great. And Remy the rat left this for me. You can see his claw mark here. But he's left the words intact. He's chewed up the sides. I don't know whose Bible. There's a church upstairs where people meet from, you know, every Sunday and they sing hymns and things like that. So some kid must have left his Bible there and Remy the rat happily get got to it. So anyway, you can see his claw mark here and he's chewed this up on the side, but the words are not chewed up, okay? And do you know what this says? Let me magnify it for you. Hang on. Okay, so this is John 4, all right? And uh, the last is uh, John. It ends with John 7, okay, the last page. These are the pages he left me. And do you know what the first verse is? Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields. They are already white for harvest. And this is all about the Passover, okay? And also in this is where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Okay, John 6, what was it? 635, I think, okay? Jesus says, I am the bread of the life. Whoever comes to me will never thirst, okay? And never hunger never hunger and never thirst come to me and this was left at my doorstep now Remy always brings me some gifts you know he'll bring me some pieces of uh, rocks or some wood or some you know torn pieces of paper from time to time he likes to give me gifts because I feed him every day outside all right but this was an incredible gift do you see this guys do you see this and I, I can't get over it it was incredible an incredible gift okay 
So in conclusion, all I can say is I had this beautiful, beautiful dream which I shared only with Sister Dawn. And of course I shared with my daughter Anya. But and it was a garden similar to this. And then at the end of it, someone another man Okay, not the Lord, but another man came and put these uh, wafer thin biscuits, which I couldn't figure out what it was. Okay, and when I woke up, and I woke up because the doorbell was ringing, and I just woke up from my sleep from this dream, and I was so sad because it was such a beautiful dream, um, uh, just a heartwarming dream. Okay, as I said, the Lord's face was shining; he was beautiful, and he was teaching me something. And when I woke up, all that teaching went away, and I was so sad. And then later, I find out that those little uh, wafers I was given were the Madzot. Okay, the Madzot. It's called the Feast of Madzot, right? That that's the unleavened bread that the Jews eat. I've never eaten that, but that's unleavened bread. So it was evidently pointing me to Passover. And then and then I get this these verses, you know, I get this, these papers from Remy, who leaves me a gift at my doorstep. Okay, I get this. John 4 to John 7. Alright, I get these papers chewed up. Okay, chewed up papers, but the words are not chewed up. And the first verse in that is this. Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white for harvest it's so tiny it's such a tiny print i can barely read it even with my reading glasses on but i get this i'm telling you guys this passover is just incredible and the connections like boom 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 you know like ararat the curse reversed and what is uh what does Paul say that all of creation in uh, Romans 8, he says all of creation is literally mourning and groaning for the redemption. Now I had totally lost, lost my blessed hope, okay, the, when 2023 started and I was like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore, I can't, it's too disappointing. But now I have it back. Even if it's not this year, this Passover, oh by the way, this Passover, okay, is... This Passover, 2023, okay, you know when it is? It is uh, from 5th April, April 5th to April 13th. Do you know what else? You know, 5 and 1, 3, you know where, where I see that? And where I have studied that? Here, 4th day, 5, 1, 3. I don't know, I mean, if you stay till this long to the end of the video, I can share this with you because only my friends will stay this long to the end of the video. But this, before it goes into 153, the eternal, the full net in John 21, 11, before it goes, the iteration goes to the fifth day, 153, the last number is 513. And this Passover, brothers and sisters, my dear, dear friends, is from April 5th to April 13th. And when is the 17th of Nissan? That also I checked, is April 7th. Okay, I think it's from... April 7th to April 8th. I mean, just check your own time zones and things. But oh my God, I am just like so. I have found my hope again. And I don't want to get too excited myself or get you guys excited because I know how tough it is to be disappointed time and again. Okay, and I stopped. I stopped even making videos. I've been doing Bible studies. I do a lot of Bible studies, but I stopped sharing them. I started sharing them only recently again. Because something told me that don't stop sharing the Bible studies. And I posted on my community post and you guys said you enjoy the Bible studies. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's Bible study. I hope I haven't missed anything. No, I haven't. I've presented everything here and everything here. So yes, I guys, I'm looking up. All right. And uh, Apart from anything, and look at the thunder and lightning and the storms outside. We, we were expecting very heavy weather. I hope you can hear my voice through the study. But it came early. We were expecting it this weekend, and it lands up today. Okay? But anyway, this had to be shared. And I'm so glad the electricity hasn't gone yet, because now I can actually, uh, you know, put it together and share it. So anyway, that's all I have to share. That's quite a lot, actually. 
because wow so the arc 117 do you remember i saw 117 in the clouds you guys do you remember that yeah the clouds had 117 written on it i've shared it before and then we had the parting of the red sea okay again on the 17th of nisan then the resurrection of our lord on the 17th of nisan all incredible stuff all incredible stuff it's just it's just beautiful to see uh anyway so i'm glad i i could manage to share the study i'll say bye now i'm just repeating myself <laughs> so goodbye and god bless you all and stay hopeful because oh my goodness nisan i showed you nisan right um, the passover this year is 5th april to 13th april and the 17th of nisan okay so i'm i'm going to go now it's the storm is really picking up outside i don't know if you can hear it on the computer i'm sure you can but i'm going to go now before the electricity glow <laughs> goes and my everything blows up here you know so i'm going to close this now so good night and god bless you guys